Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, this is Justin and Dave, and you're listening to the one and only Otaku Generation, where everything tastes like bacon. What's reach? What's bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. Welcome to show 973. Hi, hello everyone. I am Alan. I am Matt. And I am Paul. Um, Okay, so we are continuing down our path of the season impressions. We have another six. Uh, Let's see, one, two, three, three. Yeah, six. So um, why don't we when we get into it? Why don't we just jump in? What's the first one we got? All right. So the first item up on our season impressions for winter twenty twenty four season, part four is. Let's see. Sanju sai matte dotoi dato maho sky nu naruto narashishi is. Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, which is adapted from a light novel, I'm guessing. Yeah, we had a really lot of long titles this week, so a lot of light novel uh, adaptations, uh, I would say. Actually, no, this one is adapted from a manga. I guess the the like super long title thing is starting to bleed over into other <laughs> genres. Yeah, th- yeah, well, this one's got a, a little bit of bishy action going on, so somebody was enjoying drawing these guys. Yes, this is an office romance, except that it's boys. Um, our protagonist is a salary man. He's in his early 30s because he discovered that for some reason, upon reaching his 30th year and still remaining a virgin, he became a touch telepath. He's able to hear people's thoughts at the moment by making physical contact with them. And one day, as he bumps into this guy in the elevator at the place where he works, um, this guy is tall, handsome, popular, you know, well beloved by by everybody in the office. He's a good worker. He's just got all of these pluses going for him. And suddenly, it seems that he has a crush on somebody and our guy is really curious to figure out who it is. And he later determines, Oh my God, it's me. And, uh, that's, that's basically like the, the sort of meet cute instigating incident in this, uh, romance series. Yeah. And sort of, uh, the, the big, uh, I guess, theory such as it is, is that knowing what somebody's thinking does not actually help with romance. <laughs> Um, yeah, there have been like other movies about like, oh, what if men could really understand what women were thinking? Life would be wonderful. And it's like, no, it, it just falls into comedic uh, hijinks and, and misunderstandings regardless. So our relatively feckless main character, you know, he doesn't know what to do about this. He doesn't necessarily like guys but he also doesn't necessarily not like guys and he just like has <laughs> no idea what to do with any of this least of all his his extremely cute co-worker yeah and i have to say i do appreciate that unlike almost everything in sort of this uh bl genre it's not jumping immediately into the stereotypes with uh like the uke seme thing where mm. one guy is re- is reluctant and the other guy is really forceful he's going to force himself on him and that is just like so 
there has been nothing violating consent in this show so far, which is actually nice. So if you're going to do a romance, that's a good start. Nobody's pushed any real boundaries. Uh, there's been some kind of um, H some conversations or, or suggestive comments that probably should get HR involved. Um, but other than that, well, they didn't get on the sexy times in the first episode, which does suggest that they're actually aiming a little more towards the romance side of things than the uh, directly into the getting it on side of things. So, um, you know, it was it was fine. Um, I, I think, um, I mean, the main character is very much in his own head and I didn't enjoy the dynamics very much, mostly because the friend is just or the coworker is just kind of too perfect. So, you know, if you're into that sort of fantasy scenario, uh, that it's it's that it's the kind of show that might fit into that niche. But as like a generic romance, maybe not quite so much. Uh, if you're interested, everything is available on Crunchyroll this week. <laughs> yeah. OJLink.com slash 6v3. So next up is Akiyako Reicho Rebu 99. Watashi wa ura bosu desu ga mao de aremasen. Uh, villainous level 99. I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the demon lord. And this is another one of those isekai reborn in a, you know, romance game kind of things. And in this case, a college student uh, dies somehow. I sort of forget the details. Um, but she is reborn in this uh, video game she was playing except that she's shocked to discover that she's the like not she's like you know the mean girl who at the end of the game turns out to be the actual super boss needed to defeat the demon lord or whatever and she's just like well that sucks i don't want to be like slain by the hero the, the hero's adventuring party um you know, just so they can all declare their mutual love for each other. That's lame. So she decides that she's going to level up as much as she can to raise her defenses and then have nothing to do with the heroine and her three primary romantic interests. Um, and that's, that's sort of like the premise of this show. Another self-aware person living in a, a fantasy dating sim. And uh, and so she's not a very social and outgoing person. And so she hyper focuses when she ends up in this world and accidentally kind of sort of maxes out her level. <laughs> uh, which uh, to to so, so you get the uh, isekai protagonist is totally overpowered trope going on. But it takes it from there to like nobody actually thinks this is a good thing exactly. They're either scared or think she's lying. Uh, you know, she she of course can't actually avoid uh, the 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 uh, harem of cute boys who surround the protagonist um, because she like bumps into them and 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 so on. So yeah, yeah. they're the main characters. They're involved in freaking everything that's going on at this school somehow. So you can't go to the bathroom without running into some of these yeah. people. Uh, other than that, um, you know, this is pretty middle of the road isekai fodder, pretty middle of the road villainous fodder, because I'm afraid villainous is now one of the standing genres. We're going to get like three to four entries of every single freaking season. <laughs> uh, and this it's not the worst. I mean, it's better than a lot of the isekai stuff, but... Mm, um, it's it was it was okay. I mean, you know, if if, if it were on, I'd I'd watch it, but I'm probably not going to walk across the room to to push play. Yeah. Um. This, you know, what this this makes me think of like the whole, um, sort of political culture war thing where they're always going on like, oh, video games make people, you know, into violent serial killers, and there's just this whole genre about people falling into these like relatively low stakes, middle of the road dating sim things. And are like, I want to redeem the villainous, whether you're not the villainous 
or in this case, whether you are, you've got all these people who are like, no, I don't want to be an evil person. I want to live a happy life and, and you know, defeat the demon lord without being a total mega bitch. Well, and, and she actually at one point decides that maybe she should not actually have leveled up so much. She thought it was the safe thing, but now she's ended up attracting a lot of attention. Now she's like a strategic asset for the government. Uh, so, yeah. You just can't win. Exactly. So, again, I didn't hate it. I mean, it's it's perfectly fine if you're looking for an isekai thing. Um, and why would you be? But if you are, here it is. This is some isekai stuff. Crunchyroll has a lot of them, and they have this one. So, oglink.com slash 6v4. All, All right. right. So, next up is number three. Dosan ko gyaru wa namaramen koi. Or Hokkaido girls are super adorable, or I should say gals are super mm. adorable. Because this does play into the uh, the sort of like gal stereotype where you have this certain um, group of teenage girls who are all about, you know, dressing in a particular style, long fingernails, long, long lashes, you know, short skirts, no matter the weather. Um sort of that that artificial fashionable thing that that basically only teenage girls think is attractive um but this this uh particular girl is sort of the salvation of our protagonist who moves from tokyo to the far north of japan in hokkaido uh where it snows like crazy in the winter apparently and uh he he is uh sort of like standing out in the snow at the beginning of the episode because he very foolishly dismissed his taxi uh, to his dad's house because he was like, ah, the countryside, and it's snowing. It's so wide open and beautiful. I'll just walk to the rest of the way to my father's house. And the taxi guy is like, sure, you want to do that, chief? And he's like, yes, yes, I will do that. And after the taxi drives away, he's like, holy cow. It is freaking cold out here, and Hokkaido is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, so he he stumbles across this girl at a bus stop, and uh, and gets to know her, and she actually, you know, tells him he can take the bus to go to his father's house because otherwise he's going to spend three hours of walking in the snow and freeze to death. Um, although ironically, he he winds up missing the bus because he's just so caught up with the idea of talking to this hot blonde scantily clad busty chick in in this new place he's moved to um yep and he is of course an object of some interest himself being from you know the uh from metropolitan tokyo yeah with the sort of delights that can only be dreamed of out here in the sticks yeah, it's it's sort of like the transfer student situation. There's always something new and unknown and exotic about the transfer student. Um, at least unless they're a total boring schlub. Uh, which our main character kind of is, but he would really <laughs> like not to be. So this is sort of his chance to break out from sort of the... Uh, the half-assed bullying which has sort of kept him on the sidelines and you know never had a girlfriend never mm. been social he's like yeah this is my chance to, to to make a new impression to reinvent myself and actually you know get out there and you know live my live my teenage years and make the most of it and uh it's it's actually pretty nice because he he meets this girl and i get the feeling they're they're being set up for a, for a comedy kind of romantic relationship here. Uh, if you want to watch it, it's available on Crunchyroll. Didn't I say they're all available on Crunchyroll this week? They yeah. are. I think you mentioned it. Yeah, oglink.com has 6v5. Uh, just It's built into me to say what it is, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to repeat myself three more times, I suspect. So. 
Yeah, okay. so I mean, this is a, a perfectly fine show. It's not much on the romance side of things. Um, it's definitely because, uh, again, we have one character who's not exactly a character. She's more a pair of, uh, of hot knockers uh, in a short skirt. Uh, so there's a little bit of manic pixie dream girl sort of action where she sweeps into the protagonist's life and is taken by him and she's going to, you know, teach him about life and he's going to teach her uh, to appreciate everything in Hokkaido again because, you know, she feels like it's the sticks, but he's actually excited to go to the shitty festival or whatever. <laughs> um, and you know it's again this is this is okay um it definitely is leaning very heavily on the cheesecake angle mm. and you know that's uh, perfectly um you know expected from a show like this uh but you know go if you're going into it it's probably because you want a little bit of cheesecake as opposed to a, a nice romance i'd rather have actual cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right what do we have next all right uh next up is actually a uh korean title which has been adapted into japanese uh let me try and pronounce this or dr elise um dr elise the royal lady with the lamp and this is another kind of isekai show. It's kind of like a double isekai, which is at least an interesting variation on the formula where the obnoxious princess Elise uh, is executed when the revolution comes and wakes up in modern Japan um, as somebody else and is just like, oh my god, I was such a horrible person in my previous life that I was executed for it. I've got to straighten up my karma and live right. And so she devotes her time in, in contemporary Japan to becoming a doctor. Specifically, she's a, she's a surgeon. And she actually succeeds. She becomes very, very skilled because of her, her diligent efforts and pure heart. And she finds herself in basically i would say what her mid 20s as as a successful lady surgeon um unfortunately she's a, a bit too much of a success because one day she's making a trip to germany of all places to perform a delicate cardiac operation when the plane she's on has a uh, a mechanical problem like you know the number one engine blows up and they crash land and she perishes in the crash, not instantly, ironically, after she spends like all of her time providing medical assistance to the injured passengers around her, that she overlooks her own um, apparently grievously uh, fatal injury and basically lives just enough to see the rescue services heaves into view before she dies but then wakes up again as her younger empress self back in the fantasy world she originally came from and that's kind of all that happens in episode one it's all set up in episode one um but i i assume that the idea is that she's she's going to try and avert her previous fate um and avert the revolution and be a decent monarch uh yeah so i actually did in fact go ahead and watch a bit more of this one. Oh, uh, good because I, I actually thought this one had some potential and the big flaw with this first episode is the pacing is a little slow mm -hmm. and you can kind of see why they did it uh because you know they that the sort of the, the switch when you do the isekai there's actually some stakes to this extra life that she's been living in the middle of the other one uh so when she is just you know utterly gobsmacked to see her you know her 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 murdered uh family there alive uh you know it adds a little bit of of uh, of pathos to it 
and and makes sort of her her reincarnation into you know another chance yeah uh, as opposed uh, to just a gimmick yeah and it's certainly a gimmick we've seen a lot and you know in fact we've seen another one this season with uh the seven times time loop one mm-hmm uh, and we've seen it with uh, the uh, uh, the Marie Antoinette one, whatever that one was called. Yeah, I can't remember the title. <laughs> yeah, and, and and again, this one is, and, and now the main problem with that one is the main character was a fucking idiot. I mean, she just had <laughs> nothing in her head. That I want, and, and like that show was doing some things right, but the main character was just you know perpetually vapid and if they just had stopped undercutting themselves it could have been something this feels like that show but actually kind of getting it right mm. and so and it turns out that um she actually doesn't want to be queen she wants to be a doctor <laughs> uh, she wants to save people she wants to keep doing that except she is just about to be uh, married off to the prince uh, who she's through you know many years of tantruming has finally gotten everybody to agree to let her marry ah. uh, so she's uh so so we have sort of the the you know, super powered story but her superpower is a knowledge of medicine and germ theory so uh, we actually have seen a little bit of something like this with a couple of the pharmacists from another world uh types of shows uh, so I, they, if this show has a flaw, it's that, uh, once again, you know, she's a little too perfect. She's a little too good. Everything works out a little too well. But, you know, it's a, it's the kind of thing where I'm actually enjoying that aspect of it in a way I don't often. Um, she's, not, um, she's not unopposed in the things she does. She's having to work for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am actually going to be sticking with this one for a bit. I have, and I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to be actually a, a decent uh, rein, uh, reincarnation slash isekai slash villainous show. Yeah. Uh, if you want to watch it, oglang.com slash 6v6. All righty. So next up on our list is Hime-sama Gomon no Jikan desu, or Tis time for torture, princess. Uh, and this is kind of a fantasy comedy uh, kind of show where the, the battle princess from the human kingdom is captured by the agents of the demon lord. And they throw her into a, a castle cell. And along with her magic sword, for some reason... Like, if somebody had a magic sword, like an intelligent talking magic sword. I would not throw them into the dungeon <laughs> yeah. with their intelligent talking magic sword, uh, which is called X, which is short for Excalibur, even though she has nothing to do with the Arthurian mythos. It's just, you know, lifting names from, from cool stuff. Mm. And the demon army really wants to know the secrets of the human kingdom and the princess is like, ha, you could torture me all you want. I'm the princess of the realm. I am the general of the third division of the human army. I bear the magic sword X. I can stand up to whatever vile punishments your demonic minds can dish out for me. And the torturer, who is like this hot demon chick with like horns on her heads, is like, oh, so I guess you won't mind if I sit down and have this delicious buttered toast with, you know, sugar on it. And she's like, why? Like, oh, yes, it's so delicious. Doesn't it smell wonderful? And the captured princess is like, um, uh, um, um. And it turns out that the torture is... Basically, this this hot chick sort of flaunting delicious Japanese food in front of the captured battle princess. And the battle princess is like, I I was I was expecting to be like, you know, burned or or put on the rack or tortured, like really, really tortured. And you're just showing me delicious 
mouth-watering, savory, wonderful food. And so the torturer keeps, you know, overcoming her resistance with, with you know, delicious foods. And the princess, you know, after great comedic thrashing about, succumbs and and coughs up some military secret that the uh that the demon army wants to know and the joke is that she she this this ridiculous technique works on her and yet everything she tells them is is like not usable information it's like well here's where the super weapon is stored and, and the demon king is like Oh, I'm not really sure I'd know how to use a super weapon. So the demon torturer has to come back. It's like, well, how about this thing? And she's like, no, no, I'll never tell you. Not even if I give you delicious ramen. All right, you've broken me. Here's the other secret. And they take it to the demon lord. And he's like, uh, I don't really see a use for that. And it's just like, come on. You're actually getting good information. You're a crappy demon lord. No wonder you haven't conquered the human realm yet. Um, so, so that's the premise of this. This is a very broad comedy. It's it's all about sort of making fun of the conventions of of you know fantasy warfare, and it you know it's a little it's a it's a cute fun show. It's a little bit over the top and obvious, but that's that's sort of what it's here to do. Yeah, it's sort of one of these single joke shows like uh, Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle, which has yeah. a, uh, from a few season ba seasons back, very similar premise, you know, captured human princess uh, and, and is treated or acts in an unexpected way. In this case, the, 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 the joke, as Matt said, is that she is unable to resist this delicious, delicious food, ordinary food <laughs> presented in extremely attractive ways. Uh, and if so, if there is, is porn in this show, it is the food porn. Uh, because they draw the food with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of detail and care, and they talk about oh, just how amazing this food is, and she has some of those you know transforming visions of running through fields of wheat, uh, waving yes. before uh, a, a, a windmill, <laughs> and, and so on. And the interesting thing is they're actually kind of pulling off the gag each time. Uh, they're ringing the changes on it. You know, it's basically the same joke, but um, they're, they're, but they're it's finding a funny joke. It's a funny joke, and the question is, can it stay funny for a full episode? Because we have a full three separate scenarios in this first one, mm -hmm. which which would put us at something like what thirty nine for a, a whole <laughs> season. There's like have thirteen volumes of the original manga. I yes. I, I suspect no is going to be the case but like look if you if you want to be uh, uh drool over something get hungry um oglink.com slash six seven um six v seven there we go yeah and, and and this wasn't bad i i enjoyed this well enough i mean i i will watch a couple more i should i will be very very surprised if if it has enough uh sort of novelty to last a full season but you know if you don't binge it might be possible to do so so expect to hear a little more on this one yeah i get the, my impression of this show is that if you ran an anime club like every month or every couple of weeks this would be a good palate cleanser if you watch something that's like really serious and dramatic and after after you get finished with that it's like okay let's let's go for the the torture princess thing just to like clear the air and give people a a a sort of like release from the from the pressure of a, a terribly dramatic show and they do play it completely straight, uh, more or less. I mean, while the show is, you know, played in, in broad comedy, the characters are all taking it 100% <laughs> seriously, uh, which which is helpful. And instead of a narrator, we have X, the talking sword, who who provides that sort of uh, Atsukome reaction in the... Mm -hmm. in, to to the the ludicrous uh, uh, capitulation of the princess to this extremely basic form of torture. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's not torture. It's it's just temptation. Yes, exactly. All right. So that brings us to the final show of part four of our Winter Impressions series, Oroka na Tenshi wa Akuma to Odoru, or The Foolish Angel Dances with the Devil. And this is kind of a, a fantasy undercover kind of show. Basically, this, this guy shows up. He's the new transfer student in the high school, and he's secretly a demon. Ha, ha, ha. He's there to infiltrate human society and search for a charismatic leader that he can recruit to the demon's cause to whip them into shape and motivate them and get them interested in, you know, finally overrunning the human world and, you know, subverting it for hell and, you know, just whatever demons are, are out to do. Uh, this is not so much a, a fantasy RPG kind of thing. It's more a heaven and hell angels versus demons kind of show. Mm -hmm. Um, in its fantasy aspect. So he is smitten by this beautiful blonde chick in his class and tries to go on a date with her. Then he finds out she's actually an angel um, after he confesses that he's really a demon and uh, he saves her from being run over by a truck and... I'm not really sure where the heck they are going with this because the it it sort of winds up with them fighting each other because they're an angel and a demon, but they there seems to be an undercurrent to this that there's also some kind of like weird romance going on with this. Well, as romances go, this is very much in the um, the female domination category because it turns out she's just a real bastard, and she mm. takes you know sadistic pleasure in mistreating our protagonist. And I think that is going to be basically the only thing going on in this show, as she subjects him to you know indignities each time, which he doesn't like, but oh, maybe he kind of likes um. Um, so, ah. yeah, I mean, well, well, there'll be some of the heaven and hell politics, um, but other than that, uh, I was, I was not enjoying any moment that this show was on the screen. I hated it. It mm. sucks. Oh, okay. Well, if you yeah. want to enjoy the dis, disliking, I, I, wherever, whatever the word in my brain <laughs> that I was about to say didn't make any sense as I was about to say it. Um, anyhow, if you want to dislike it too, let me, let me phrase it that way. OGlink.com slash 6v8. And that concludes the half dozen uh, this week. So, yeah. Um, anything? So one or two that seemed interesting. Yeah. Which yeah. is not, not a bad of weeks. record. I mean, they're they're getting a little worse every week, but we still get the Isekais and the <laughs> the 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 um, you know reincarnated uh, redo um, you know time time loop things. You know, we're mm -hmm. just we're just getting new trends that I I foresee are going to be very boring in the future. <laughs> so yeah, uh, look, uh... at least it's not uh, a scissor fetish or something like that. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, there is that, but I, I sort of feel like we're we're Charles Darwin on a faraway island, just examining examining the isekai for like all the little variations of beak shape that they have. Mm. Yeah, but very few of them are in, probably. I'll, actually, I'll just go and say for me, none of them are enjoyable. So uh, well, there's you know, been half until the dodo out of the, like probably 500 that we've watched. There's probably been one or two that have been reasonably good. Um, but in general, as a premise, bad idea. So, <laughs> you know, go seek another idea, please, um, is where I'm at. So that being said, I think that concludes this week's uh, show, unless we have anything else to talk about. Yep, well, I think that's it. Oh, go ahead. What you I, I think we're skipping the uh, the What's Free stuff while the new season is, is underway. So we'll just have to, like, save that for another two or mm -hmm. three weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's this is going to be a moment. 
So, um, and look, it doesn't mean that things aren't happening around in life. It just means that we're not talking about them here for this these shows. So that we are said, laser focused on our mission here. Indeed. Uh, so with that said, I'm closing the show up for now. Uh, so for all the things we've mentioned here, visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. Um, what else? You want to come in and hang out with us in Discord? You can, oglink.com slash Discord. Um, you want to leave feedback slash feedback. Uh, you want to become a patron supporter, oglink.com slash Patreon or patron or support. Um, okay. Uh, you can always also hit us up by email um, at talk.generationgmail.com. Okay, so I'm not even giving you guys the choice. You guys been hitting up that solo cup for a little bit too long, so I'm going for the mug this week, and I <laughs> fear I'm going to regret it, but here we go. Um, any rough times are behind you. Well, okay, so this is, I think, an interesting example here because it does not – Use the future tense, but it is actually saying by the negative that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there is something that is not going to happen in the future, which is to say the rough times that you have been going through. So, in fact, this is going out on a limb. It's making a, you know, probably not excessively um, 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 risky claim that you're going through some rough times, man, and I see you. And <laughs> things are going to get better. So, you know, this is a fortune that tells you what you want to hear, but I have to conclude this is a fortune. Okay. Yay! Well, there you go. Um, all right. Well, that also hits your, your uh, contractual obligation this week, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that said, thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. And until next time, have a good one.